Hey, Joe. Um, just want to pick your brain real quick. What do you look for in an MVP? What do you think are the most important qualities in determining who wins? I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't have a vote or do that. But uh, to me, my communication to our guys is just how do you impact winning like, uh, and the things that go into it. Uh, just being a well-rounded player on both ends of the floor and uh, putting your team in the best position to win a championship every year. And uh, just as a follow-up, uh, you think 65 games is the right amount of games to have to win an award? I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Joe, you've talked a little bit about it, but the differential for you guys between the above the break threes and the corner threes, what do you think is the biggest reasoning for that? It feels like recently the corner threes have come up a little bit, but you know, mostly above the break for you, for you guys this year. Is that just sort of the personnel or you know, the way you're running the offense or the way teams are guarding you? I actually didn't know that. I, I didn't put any thought into that, so I can't give you a good answer as to why that is. We just try to make the best make the best play. If you're open, shoot it. If not, drive it and look for the next available advantage. So that's a good uh, stat, but I didn't know that. In Chicago, you said that one of your goals has been to separate Jason and Jalen. What are some of the ways that you carry that out? Uh, I mean, I think just to, there's two different people or two different players just highlighting who they are as people, the strengths that they have. Uh, they played the game differently. They have different leadership qualities. Uh, they're both highly effective players and, and great people, and uh, the way they lead are different. So just making sure that they don't get lumped together and uh, that they, you know, they have their own identities I think is important. Uh, to close out the... To, to close out the season, where do you see room for improvement in, in regards to closing out games for the rest of the season? Situational basketball, game management, game awareness. Uh, last two games, we had an illegal screen at the end of the quarter where we got the two-for-one and gave the other team the last play of the game. It's cost us five points. Uh, we've missed two two-for-ones because of an offensive rebound. Uh, and so situational basketball is the difference between winning and losing on possessions. And so just constantly growing at those things. And uh, just making sure we get better at, at the fundamentals and uh, the details. Uh, there's a lot of games left. You know, everybody's, everybody likes to look for the next thing, you know, the narrative. And so everyone's worried about the next step. But we got 20-something games left. They're really hard games. And, you know, we have to continue to play hard and play at a high level uh, discipline on both ends of the floor. You are on a season-long win streak with eight games. What's been the key to the consistency that you've seen? Uh, our effort. Uh, I think the guys, uh, it starts with them. They come in and play hard every single game. And uh, I think it starts there. Uh, so anytime you, you effort, you got a chance. And then uh, the guys have been dialed into the details as far as, you know, executing on both ends of the floor. Uh, and our situation in basketball has, you know, improved. Obviously, uh, with those two plays, you have to get better at them. Uh, but I like uh, the way our guys have uh, navigated the game management, you know, executing on the offensive end and, um, you know, our defensive uh, effort. I think those two things are important. They've done a good job of that. Sixers obviously aren't at full house or for full health, excuse me. Um, how do you prepare for a guy like uh, Tyrese Maxey, who has seemingly provided uh, a big spark for this team? I know you like to emphasize defense a lot. Yeah, uh, one, you know, you, you got to tally up all his points and see the percentage of his points and what areas of the game they come from, which ones you can control and take away, and which ones that he's going to get. He's a great player, so he's going to he's going to get his 20 field goal attempts or you know somewhere around there. And uh, obviously, with the addition of Heald, uh, you know, he has an impact to affect the game. So they're still a really good team, and they're they're a talented team and uh, they're dangerous. Ubre and Harris are, you know, both dangerous guys in transition and uh, catch and shoot threes and the ability to affect the offensive glass. So just because they're not, they're a little under man doesn't mean they're not good. And I, and I think they've been playing at a good level and they're well coached. So uh, it's going to be a tough game.